In this video, I'm going to cover some general stuff around the user interface for Plan 9. In this case, I'm using 9Front, but the people maintaining 9Front haven't made many changes to the basic user interface. First off, the basic terminal configuration loads a graphical user interface. We have a mouse, windows, we have text and graphics. Plan 9 was designed as a successor to Unix, and at the time, uh, graphical interfaces and mice were already a thing. Plan 9 was designed from the start to have a uh, graphical interface. From the fourth edition onwards, this windowing system is called Rio. Uh, Rio is very lightweight and gets away with that due to two things. Uh, one, access to the graphics hardware is built right into the kernel, and two, it can exploit the whole everything as a file and a namespace concept to handle the mouse, keyboard, and controlling the windows. Mice were already a standard in the 1990s when Plan 9 was first released, and three-button mice in particular were a standard in Unix with the X Windows system. Plan 9, with its idea of being more Unix than Unix, took the use of a three-button mouse to such an extreme that it's difficult to use it without it. Uh, most modern wheel mice have a button in the wheel, which Plan 9 will see as the middle button. If for whatever reason you don't have access to a middle mouse button, Holding shift while clicking the right button will emulate a middle button. A couple of bits of trivia to keep in mind. The color schemes found in most original Plan 9 software is rather low-key pastel stuff. This was deliberate. The developers had read some research about the evolution of human visual perception and chose soft colors like those found in nature. Also, if you're used to using a strictly text-based terminals from Unix systems, you will find yourself quickly frustrated with the way Plan 9 handles navigating around text. Uh, the people at Bell Labs had some studies timing people and found that people could navigate around text faster using a mouse, even if the subjects themselves thought they were faster with just the keyboard. And finally, Plan 9 was mostly used internally at Bell Labs for writing code and technical papers. So while it was going with the mainstream in terms of a mouse-driven graphical interface, the developers themselves mostly wrote applications for manipulating plain text. Uh, there's no reason one couldn't add icons and other eye candy to Rio. It's just that they are not included in the standard install. But as we'll see, tons of text manipulating tools are built in. In Plan 9 terms, the mouse buttons are numbered. One for left, two for middle, and three for right. Holding down button three out on the desktop brings up the window control menu. Letting up on new changes the cursor to a cross. Clicking button three again and holding it down lets you sweep out a new window. And the new window runs the RC shell by default. If I select new again, but then press button one or two, it cancels it. So all the actions in the window menu have to be completed using button three. Resize lets you select a window and sweep out a different shape for it. So it makes the old window go away and just replaces it with a new one. Well, not a new one, it's the same one, but it's a different size. Move lets you select a window and move it around. Delete will remove a window and ends any processes that are running in it. Hide is uh, sort of like minimizing. It makes the window disappear, but whatever was running in it is still running. And when you bring up the window man menu again, you'll see an entry for the hidden window. If you select it, it brings it back. If you move a window over another,
Rio will consider it hidden. And selecting it from the hidden menu or the hidden window option brings it back up to the foreground. Normally button one and two don't do anything on their own on the desktop, but if you have a window with a shell open in it, it will bring up the text manipulation menu. And it will show up inside or outside, but it'll only affect the window that has focus. Cut and paste should be familiar to everyone. Snarf is Plan 9's term for copy, and you'll see it called that elsewhere. What other resistant systems often refer to as a clipboard, uh, where things get cut or copied. In Plan 9, they are held in a snarf buffer. Uh, the other option is Plum. Plum invokes the plumber, which is sort of a... Uh, like a hyperlink system for plan nine. It tries to figure out what the file is and opens it with the appropriate programs. So I'll highlight this PNG file, send it to the plumber and it opens it up in page. So look will find the next instance of a word. So if I highlight this is and say look, oh, found an is in display, is it'll just jump around and find all the references to is. Let's try a more complicated word, postscript. Look for postscript. There we go. Um, send is sort of a combination of copy, paste, and enter. And it will automatically take whatever you've highlighted and send it down to the command prompt and hit enter. So it just automatically runs that command for you. The scroll option sets a window to scroll automatically. So you can see it's already jumped all the way down to the bottom of all this man page here. The default behavior is for the text to fill the window and then block whatever program is running until it fills, until the user scrolls down farther. Uh, the scroll bar works differently than most other systems too. Um, where you put the mouse on the scroll bar dictates how far up or down it'll scroll. And button one goes up, and button three goes down. If you put it at the top, you can go up and down one line at a time. If you're down at the bottom, it'll jump a lot farther. And you can put it in the middle to go somewhere in between. If you hold it down, it'll just continuously run. Button two will jump to specific spots. And the scroll wheel also works. Uh, it could be kind of sensitive too to where it's placed. So if it's near the top, a lot of times it'll scroll slower. You can set scrolling to be the default mode in all the windows in Rio, and in another video I'll show how to set that up.
One more thing to help with the quality of life when using Plan 9, especially if you're going to be running any buggy code or messing with plugging or unplugging USB devices. is that Plan 9 will just spam error messages onto the screen. Um, you can like move windows around to sort of like force it to redraw. But that's kind of a pain to do. Um, if you're getting a lot of those, or you're just messing with the USB devices a lot, open up a little window somewhere, and you run cat slash dev slash kprint. Hit enter and let it run. And now all those sort of little errors will just pop up in that little window instead of being spammed to the screen. And you can also just hide that and the error message will still get written to it, but it won't be on your screen. And before wrapping up this video, uh, back to that thing about text manipulation. All the text in an RC shell can be messed with. You can put your cursor anywhere, add text, remove text. Um, cut it. Paste it. Uh, whatever you want. Um, you can edit a previous command if you find one and have it do something else. And then just highlight it and use send to run it. So you do have to be mindful about where you leave your cursor in RC. If you accidentally, you know, go to hit a window to give it focus, it might put it somewhere weird and you start typing a command and it won't run. The command has to actually be at the command prompt to, oops, to work. So if I do something and then leave my cursor there and then try to run another command, it doesn't work. So you do have to be mindful about where you put your cursor, but all the text, everything's just treated as like a text document that's just infinitely scrolling. You can copy, paste, edit, whatever you want. Um, and that should be all for now. Um, should get you far enough poking around your system, so have fun.